Tonight, friends, I'm going to talk about fine food, fine breakfast, fine flavor and nourishment, and I'm not going to talk about ration food. How do I do it? <laughs> easily, good people, easily. I talk about crisp, toasty brown grape nut flakes. They're mighty swell eating. Yes, grape nut flakes are top for taste appeal. They have such a malty rich goodness, such an outstanding, distinctive flavor, that grand grape nut flavor, in tongue-easing, toasty flake form. And here's news for you homemakers on the thrift shift. You can buy as many as you need of those big 12-ounce economy-sized packages of Grape Nuts Flakes without spending a single precious ration stamp. Delicious, nutritious Grape Nuts Flakes are not rationed. Ask for Grape Nuts Flakes, America's fastest-growing breakfast cereal. Played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who lost $50 on Rochester's horse in the Kentucky Derby yesterday and took it like a man, it says here, Jack Benny! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny, the gambler, talking. And, Don, I'll admit that I was a little disappointed when Rochester's horse came in last. But what really gets me is that I lost $50 and the whole race was over in two minutes. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, losing $50 in two minutes, that's too fast. Yes. Why, several times in hold-ups, I've stretched it out to ten minutes. <laughs> you know, ad-lib with a guy while he's taking my shoe off. <laughs> Anyway, the race is over. I lost $50, and heaven knows I wish I could forget it. <laughs> I mean, I'm really, I'm really not a sore loser. What do you mean, you're not a sore loser? Oh, hello, Mary. I mean, I can take it. I never care what I lose on a horse race. What are you talking about? A couple of months ago, you lost $2 on one of Bing Crosby's horses, and you burned his house down. <laughs> I was in New York when Crosby's horse, when Crosby's house burned down. It could have been his horse. But getting back to the Kentucky Derby, I wasn't disappointed when I lost that bet on Rochester's horse. I heard the result over the air, I walked over to the radio, and I turned off the dial. You bit off the dial. <laughs> Mary, for the last time, I was not disappointed. I was not upset. Then why did you run in the bathroom and try to slash your wrist? <laughs> Because the broadcast was sponsored by Gillette Blue Blades and it threw me a thought. <laughs> That's the only reason. Say, Jackson, you aren't the only guy that lost dough on that race. I hear Rochester lost his whole bankroll. Yeah, he wired me for some money, but I didn't send him any. Well, then how's he going to get home? He's riding his horse from Kentucky. <laughs> He'd make much better time if the horse would ride him. <laughs> Burnt cork, he had to call him. Burnt cork. I can roll a cork down the street with my nose faster than that horse can run. <laughs> it just so happens you have a very good nose for cork rolling. <laughs> That's not the picture at all, sis. Stop jiggling, you know. You want to know something, Jackson? I won 20 bucks on Rochester's horse. How could you win 20 bucks when the horse came in last? I bet he'd still be breathing at the end of the race. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, Bill, you're the kind of a... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, you lost $50. Go ahead, kick me. <laughs> kick you? What for? It's right in my contract. When you're lonely, sad, and blue, I get it. <laughs> Don't worry, kid. I'm not going to kick you. Okay, then I'll take this pie tin out of my pants. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. There's a pie in it. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen... Lemon meringue. I know, I know. <laughs> now, let's forget about the derby and horse races and everything. We've got a program to do. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature Kentucky... I mean, feature attraction <laughs> this evening, we are going to present... Oh, pardon me, Jack. I'll take it. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction this evening, we would like to show you what happened last week when Jack rented Eddie Cantor's house in Palm Springs. It seems that... Now, wait a minute, Don. Nobody's interested in that little episode in Palm Springs. I rented Cantor's house. I had a very pleasant week. I paid him for it. You what? I had a very pleasant week. <laughs> so let's... <laughs> Tonight we're going to do a play. But Mary thought this would be much better. Mary, Mary, who's the boss of this program, me or Mary? Great nuts flakes in the big 12-ounce economy size package. That's who's the boss. <laughs> well, if you're referring to General Foods, Don, we, we get along swell. Guys, I remember old General Foods when he was just a yard bird. <laughs> that hair ought to be shot. Listen. <laughs> Mary, take my gun outside. There's no smoking in the studio. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as I start to say before I miss Harris, for our feature attraction this evening, we are going to present a play. Now, Jack, Benny, we're not having any play. Go ahead, Don. Tell everybody what happened to us at Palm Springs last week. Okay. Oh. Well, the whole thing started when Jack's doctor told him last Monday morning that the only way to really clear up his cold was to spend a week on the desert. On the desert, on the desert. Big fat cactus. <laughs> Jack and Mary had just left the doctor's office and were walking along Vine Street toward the Brown Derby, where Jack gets his toothpick to park his... There you are, mister. Are you all right now? Yes, yes, yes. Thanks, honey. Are you sure you can manage alone? Yes, yes, yes. I'm all right. Well, goodbye, mister. Goodbye. Don, those Boy Scouts are always leading me across the street. <laughs> Not that old. Well, I'm starving, Jack. Let's drop in at the Brown Derby and get something to eat. I know a place right up the street from the Brown Derby that's terrific. Coolahan's Hot Doggery. I'm not going to that joint. What do you mean, joint? Everybody goes there. Look at their slogan, Burp with the Movie Star. I'm <laughs> <laughs> this cold. Imagine my doctor telling me the only way to get over it is to go to Palm Springs. Now I have to buy a tent. A what? A tent. Did it ever occur to you to stop at a hotel? I don't know anybody staying at a hotel in Palm Springs. I mean, get a room of your own, a place where you can have both ends of the towel. <laughs> oh, I might have to at that. Well, here's Houlihan's hot doggery. Let's go in. Hello, Houlihan. <laughs> I'm about something to eat. Did you make a reservation? <laughs> I don't know, did you, Jack? <laughs> no, I forgot to. Then you lady. Look, Mr. Houlihan, I wish the plates in here were as shiny as his head. <laughs> Look, Mr. Houlihan, I'm Jack Benny. I dine here four or five times a week. You got a wonderful stomach. Get out of here before it's too late. <laughs> okay, some other time. Come on, Mary. Let's go. Wow, this fresh air smells good. We were only in there a second. <laughs> if you want to go out and be so ritzy, we'll walk down to the Brown Derby. Come on. Gosh, the Brown Derby sure is jammed today. Give me your arm, mister, and I'll help you through the crowd. Go away, son. Go away. I don't need you. Well, if you ever do, ask for Dick Davis, Beaver Patrol. <laughs> I'll remember that. Come on, let's find a table. Yeah. See, this place sure draws the tourists. <clears throat> I hope nobody asks me, Jack Benny, for my autograph. <laughs> Uh, what's that name again? Jack Benny. Well, nothing happened. Let's eat. <laughs> hmm. There's Chili as the head waiter over there. Maybe he can... Say, Jack, isn't that Eddie Cantor in that front booth? Where? Oh, yeah, that is Eddie. Yeah, I hope I look as good as he does when I'm his age. <laughs> oh. Yes, sir. See, I just thought of something, Jack. Eddie's got a house in Palm Springs. Maybe you can rent it from him. Rent Tanner's house? Mm -hmm. What do you mean, rent it? He's a friend of mine. 
He'll give it to me. Let's sit, sit with him. Hello, Eddie. How are you? Well, Jack, Mary, come on, sit down. Well, Jack, what are you doing in the derby? Raining outside, huh? <laughs> no, 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 it was Mary's, Mary's idea. I haven't seen you in a long time, Jack. You look marvelous. Well, thanks, Eddie, thanks. I've been pretty sick, you know. Well, sick or not, I hope I look as good as you do when I'm your age. <laughs> Well, how's the, uh, how's the family, Eddie? How's Ida and the boys? Oh, they're all... <laughs> boys? What are boys? <laughs> Jack, my kids are girls. You're oh. thinking of Crosby. Crosby? Yeah, remember I burned his house down for you when you were in New York? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, thanks. Well, go ahead and order something to eat, Mary. Incidentally, the peanut butter sandwiches here are delicious. In... <laughs> Incidentally, I'm having a cream turkey. Incidentally, the cream turkey costs a dollar seventy-five. Incidentally, everybody's looking at us. <laughs> Let them look. They're looking. They're looking. All right. You can have the cream turkey, Mary. But if I ask you for a kiss on the cab on the way home, don't say what for. <laughs> I'm kind of hungry myself. What are you having there, Eddie? It looks good. Chicken soup with egg noodles? Chicken soup with egg noodles, huh? I think I'll have some of that. Okay, I'll have the way to bring you a spoon. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll, I'll order some. A bowl for myself. They haven't got it today. I brought this one from home. <laughs> oh, spoon, waiter. Spoon, spoon. What for? I want a spoon to eat chicken soup with my friend here. He brought his own spoon. Look, I came unprepared. Give me a spoon. Here you are. Thanks. And waiter, bring me an order of cream turkey. At last, a sale in this booth. I can't believe it. <laughs> that guy. Gee, this soup looks good. Yeah, let's start. One, two. You know, Eddie, I'm sure glad. I... <clears throat> Boy, this is hot. You know, Eddie, I'm sure glad I. Eddie, would you mind eating with your left hand? And putting your right arm around my shoulder, I'm too far from the bowl. Is this better, Jack? A? Oh, I'm sorry. My elbow's in your rear. <laughs> yeah, we got to think of something else. Well, why don't you put your right hand through my left sleeve, and then we can both dip at the same time, huh? <laughs> no, then we'd have to cut a hole in your coat. Well, that won't work. Why don't you put the bowl on my head and eat piggyback? <laughs> Go and get that cream turkey. I think we're all right now, Eddie. Let's go. One, two. As I was saying, Eddie, I'm sure glad I bumped into By you. By the way, Jack, would you mind breaking a cracker and putting it in the soup? Sorry, Eddie, but I can't stand crackers in my soup. Well, break one in any way and float it over to my side. <laughs> okay. There. Anyway, Eddie, I'm sure glad I, I'm glad I bumped into you. I, you see? You see? The crackers aren't floating. You see, they're all on my side. Well, tip the bowl a little, will you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Get ready, Eddie. Yeah, I can hardly make that. Get ready, Eddie. Forward two. Say, Mary, while you're waiting, why don't you get a spoon and join us? Don't bring guests. It's crowded enough. <laughs> what do you think? This is the Hollywood Bowl? Well, it's so delicious. I thought... Whoop, whoop, hold it. Hold it. Hold it there, Eddie. What's the matter? That noodle is mine. Most of it is on my spoon. Now, give me that noodle. Oh, no, you don't. Let go of that noodle. You let go. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You look like two robins with a worm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had enough anyway. There's your cream turkey, miss. Thank you. Do you want three forks with it or are the boys sitting this one out? <laughs> Don't be so smart. Well, I've been trying to say, Eddie, I'm sure glad I bumped into you. You know, I'm going to Palm Springs for a few days, and I thought maybe you'd like to join me. I thought maybe we could get a room together in a hotel. I don't think I can make it, Jack, but say, I'll tell you what. What, what, what? Tell me what, what? Well, no, I don't think you'd like it. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Tell me. Tell me, what were you going to say? Well, I happen to have a little house down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Why don't you stay there instead of a hotel? Well, that's, that's darn nice of you, Eddie. What would you charge me for it? Oh, Jack, we're friends. We've known each other for years. Take the house for nothing. No, no, Eddie. Now, wait a minute. No, friendship is friendship. But I don't want to take advantage of it. Now, I insist on paying you for your house. Take it for nothing, please. I'll feel better. But, Eddie, I'll feel much better if you charge me something. No, for. no. Now, come on, cut it. Now, how much do you want for one week? One week? What is... Three hundred dollars? <laughs> Three hundred dollars. <laughs> Gee, isn't that a big jump from nothing? <laughs> Jack, look hey, what you're getting—a tennis. I don't like swimming. And four bedrooms. I've had insomnia for two months. Now, Eddie, help me, please. Cut that price. <laughs> All right, you can have the house for two hundred and fifty. How's that? I'm still restless. <laughs> look, Eddie, give me the house for nothing. You'll feel better, like you said. All right, Jack Benny, I'll give you the house for nothing on one condition. What's that? Look. There are plenty of hotels in Palm Springs. Don't start a new one, will you, Jack? <laughs> Don't worry, I won't. Well, thanks, Eddie. All right, you're welcome, Jack. So long. So long. I'll see you later. in the blue of evening sung by Dennis Day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to continue with our story of what happened when Jack rented Eddie Cantor's house in Palm Springs. Hey, you big fat stool pigeon, tell him everything. <laughs> well, bright and early Tuesday morning, Jack, Mary, Dennis, Phil, and Jack myself were out on it. Highway 99, hitchhiking our way that's to that's Palm good. Springs. Mary had no trouble stopping a truck. I use the old garter trick, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and before many hours had passed, we had arrived at the Springs and were hiding in the bushes in front of Cantor's house. It uh, seems that Jack thought it would be a good... Now, listen, everybody. You stay in the bushes here, and I'll go up and ring the doorbell. What do we have to stay here for, Mr. Benny? That's so loud, Dennis. If you think I'm going to spend five days in these hollyhocks, you're crazy. <laughs> It'll only be for a few minutes. Once I get inside, you can all drop in casually. I don't want the caretaker to tell Cantor that I brought a whole gang with me. After all, you know how cheap he is. How cheap is he, expert? <laughs> Phil, pull your head down and try to look like a hollyhock. <laughs> I look more like a gladiola. Quiet. I worry about things. Damn it. <laughs> Flowers should be smelled and not heard. <laughs> now remember, fellas, when I give the signal, come in casually, you know? 
Let's see. Where's the doorbell? Oh, here it is. We want candor. What a ham. <laughs> Pull your head down, kids. Uh, here comes somebody. Holy smoke, the house is haunted. How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you do? Are you the custodian? I beg your pardon. I said, are you the ca- caretaker? No, you didn't. You said, are you the custodian? <laughs> well, custodian and caretaker are identical. They're synonyms. They're synonymous. Mm. You save time by ignoring me. <laughs> Look, all I want to know is, what, what do you do here? Eddie Camper pays me to stay here and keep burglars away. Burglars? Well, mm. are there many burglars in Palm Springs? Mm, not only me. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. You wouldn't take anything. I wouldn't take anything. Have you got the correct time, please? Why, it... That's strange. I must have left my watch at home. Ha, <laughs> ha, Silly boy. <laughs> mm. Well, look, look, I'm Jack Benny. The feeling is mutual. What do you mean the feeling is mutual? I don't like you and you don't like me. Look, I'm Jack Benny. Mr. Cantor said I could use his house this week. You're Jack Be- You're Jack Benny? Yes, I'm Jack Benny. If I look like you when I reach your age, I shouldn't reach it. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? Now, are you going to let me in or not? <laughs> Yes, come in and bring those hollyhocks with you. Come on in, kids. Everything's all set. Come on. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we all took our luggage, went inside the house, and made ourselves comfortable. Jack, of course, took Eddie's room and started to unpack his bag. Let's see. I got my white flannels and my blazer. My parasol, in case it gets too sunny. (laughs) And here's your bathing trunk. Thank you. Now, where's my... Oh, darn it, now I won't be able to go in swimming. What's the matter? Did you forget your muscles? <laughs> no, I forgot my water wings. What's the difference? You couldn't blow them up anyway. <laughs> Cut that out. Hey, Jackson, Tanner's sure got a swell layout here. Look at all those pictures of movie stars on the wall. That's right, Phil, we're all up there. There's my picture over there. Where, Mr. Benny? Right there, above the dresser. That's Gene Autry's horse. <laughs> oh, yes, the white mane fooled me. <laughs> Although I gave Tanner a beautiful picture of myself. I must be around here someplace. Oh, Dennis, will you please put my razor and my toothbrush uh, toothbrush in the bathroom? Oh, yes, sir. And Mary, put my cold cream on the dressing table, will you? Okay. Now, where did I put oh, my... Oh, Mr. Benny! <laughs> what is it, Dennis? I found your picture! <laughs> I knew he had it around here someplace. Who can that be? I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Eddie. Are you comfortable? Is everything all right? Oh, swell. The house is wonderful, Eddie. I'm glad you like it. By the way, Jack, I had a little talk with Ida, and I told her I'd let you have the house for nothing. How'd she take it? When I stopped bouncing, it was $300. <laughs> you mean I'd expect me to pay $300 rent? Yes, and 10 cents for the chicken soup. Well, all I can say is you're a fine friend. Well, don't blame me. Don't blame you. Who's the boss of your family? You or Ida? I'll call you back. She's standing right here. <laughs> but Eddie argue with her insists. What are you, a man or a mouse? I'll have to call you back on that, too. <laughs> okay, I'll send you a check. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm sorry about this, Jack, but anyway, have a good time. Ida, stop pushing. I can certainly wish him a good time. Have a good time, Jack. Keep it. How a woman can make such delicious chicken soup and be so mercenary. Oh, well, what do we do, Jack? Go home? We can't go home. I'm stuck for $300, 10 cents, and a wristwatch. Now, listen, Mary, and this goes for all of you. You're all chipping in and paying for your rooms here. Phil, you get the big room at the head of the stairs. That'll be 10 bucks a day. And Don, yes, Jack. you get the corner bedroom with cloth ventilation. That's twelve fifty. Dennis, you can sleep on the Davenport for three and a half. Mary, you take Ida's room, and we'll put a sign out front, tourists accommodated. I'll get that $300 back if it's the last thing I do. Well, Eddie, 
I, I want to thank you and Bert Gordon, the mad Russian, for coming over here today. And, uh, really, I was thinking... Oh, stop thinking. You've got the violin under your chin. Phil is ready. I'll sing, all right? Okay, let's go. Come on. Give us another... Every star above knows the one I love, sweet. <laughs> and the moon up high, I'd like to kill that guy, sweet. <laughs> no one else it seems ever shares my dreams. And without you, dear, I don't know what I'd... When you're feeling mighty blue, great my flakes is good for you. Out of mine, you live all the time, sweet. <laughs> no one else it seems ever shares my dreams. And without you, dear, I don't know what I'd... I wish that he would play piano so I could tell my sweet I pan a heart of mine. You live all the time, sweet Sue. Just you. Ladies and gentlemen, but do you know the slogan that will probably go ringing down the corridors of time when it comes to the history of better living? That's Uncle Sam's famous new slogan, The Basic Seven. The Basic Seven was created to ensure a better fed and hence more efficient America. Makes sense, doesn't it? Makes wise sense. So learn and live by The Basic Seven. The seven groups of foods our government urges us to eat daily, including proteins, carbohydrates, fat, minerals, and vitamins, because these supply the energy and tissue-building material we need for all-around good health. Featured in the Basic 7, you'll find whole grain cereals such as crisp, toasty brown grape nuts flakes. In Group 4, you'll find milk. In Group 3, fruit. Combine these, and here's one simple, inexpensive way to get well started on your daily Basic 7 food menu. Here's a breakfast, lunch, or supper combination that's mighty tempting and tasting and, more important, rich in essential food values. Remember, it doesn't take a single precious ration stamp to buy thrifty grape nut flakes. The last number of the 31st program of the new Grape Nut Flake series will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Jack Benny program is written by Bill Morrow and Ed Beloy. Hearty and hot, folks. That's hot Grape Nut Sweet Meal. Hot cereal member of the Grape Nut family. Extra delicious. With roasted wheat goodness, extra nutritious with whole grain food values plus, extra quick cooking in just three minutes flat. Say hot grape nut sweet meal for heartier, healthier breakfast. Remember, it's not rationed. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles. <laughs>